Mm. Oh, crap. No. So weird. I don't even know. I don't even know this is working. Can anybody on Twitter tell me if they can actually hear me right now? If they can see and hear me right now? Anybody? Anybody? It's fine. Totally fine. How do I make my screen bigger? Oh. And people have said, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay, great. People are hearing me. This is happening. All right, this is happening. All right, I'm going to hit this record button here because I think I have to do that. So I am recording. Okay, great. Hey, um, hi, everybody that is uh, here <laughs> watching me live stream. I wish I could see how many people. Oh, here we go, 484 views. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. We're getting, we're getting all kinds. So, hey, for anybody who's um, tuning in right now, um, so the biggest reason I wanted to do this uh, live q and is because I really desperately want to answer any and all questions related to Nerd HQ, to our Indiegogo campaign. I don't want anybody having any weird questions or concerns. I want you guys to know that it's totally above board and I am trying to just bring you the same thing we've been bringing you for three years, which is something I super believe in. Um, oh, and also trying to clear up any questions people have about the Chuck movie and any talk I've made about the Chuck movie and exactly what I mean by that and um, yeah and 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 all kinds of other things that you might have questions about but what I was hoping to do is I'm gonna answer some questions that are not necessarily related to that and kind of let people uh, get into this this live uh, Q&A and then once I've hit you know a, whole, a thousand let's say a thousand views or if I even get there I don't know who knows uh, then I'll start getting into the the meat of what I wanted to talk about if that makes any sense okay so here we go I'm gonna go to my Twitter feed um, let's see hi Zach what was uh, from Emma Sheriff Charming at Sheriff Charming uh, what's your favorite all-time scene uh, to shoot on Chuck Oh my gosh, I have no idea. Um, I really did love... Uh, uh, people ask me what my favorite episode was, and it's kind of very difficult to, to say. Um, but I really enjoyed Chuck vs. the Beard. And I know that's biased because it was the first one I directed. But it really had a lot of meat to it. And it was the first time Morgan found out about my secret. And um, I think that scene where Morgan finds out my secret uh, might have been my favorite scene. It was just... Uh, it all kind of happened uh, very um, last second. We had very little time. Um, our typical DP who was working on the show, uh, Buzz Fightchance, who is an awesome dude and super talented, um, was like uh, working on the next episode. And um, our, uh, our um, other unit DP uh, and cameraman Bobby Altman was helping me with that. And we did this really cool track shot around both Josh and I. And it just ended up working perfectly. And we were able to kind of capture a really poignant and, and fun moment between the two of us. And um, so if I had to pick one right now, I guess that would be what it is. Oh, Amy Chapman says, she, I see you, Zach. I see, I don't see you, Amy, but I'm glad you can see me. That's, that's fortunate. And you can hear me. Thank you, Lindsay Scanlon. Uh, right. So I'm glad, I'm glad this is all working. Um, uh, oh, Rose uh, Torregrosa. Uh, you feel don't feel bad that you can't donate. I, I don't. Nobody should feel bad if they can't donate to the Nerd HQ campaign. I I try to make that clear in the video that I put up there. Um, I know not everybody's going to be able to or feel led to. Uh, the whole point was just kind of putting it out there to see who did. Um, and for all of you out there who have donated, thank you so much. And for those of you who can't or don't feel led to do that, that's totally fine. 
I, I'm, I ain't mad at you. Um, let's see. Um, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying to scroll through Twitter. So there's going to be these moments where I am not saying anything, which is probably, uh, will you please ask me to marry you? I cannot, I cannot do that, Lydia Black. Uh, I'm sorry. But I, there's a guy out there for you. I promise. Um, let's see. What else? <laughs> what, what have we got? Ooh, what about a Chuck Castle Doctor Who Firefly Ultra panel? <laughs> well, I guess that would be like me, Nathan, and Matt. Because Nathan takes care of Castle and Firefly. I'm going to work on that. I'm going to work on that. Um, okay, hold on. I'm, now I'm just going to... Oh, i got a whole bunch of new tweets. Hey, guys, if you asked a question uh, previously, earlier, maybe retweet that question because uh, they're starting to pile up and I don't know how far down I need to go. What NCAA team are you rooting for this year? Wait, hold on. How many people are... Oh, we're almost at 1,000 views, so that I, I can almost get into all this stuff. Fantastic. Uh, what NCAA team are you rooting for this year? Uh, I don't know. I think that whole Wichita story is pretty cool, isn't it? I think that's, I think that's pretty, pretty dope. Um, I didn't really pull any pranks. Uh, that, by the way, that last one was from Emily Ann 0614. Uh, I take it you're a big, uh, college basketball. <laughs> Dave Coleman is telling me I should be rooting for Kentucky. No kidding, Dave. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, Jedi Chuckster Judy, I, I, I'm not a big prank puller. I never really pulled any pranks on the set of Chuck. Really. I mean, I dropped a deuce in Josh's toilet in his trailer a couple of times and just let it sit there. <laughs> That's a little bit of a prank, I suppose. Um, uh, let's see. Du -du. Chances of me coming back to England and doing one of the Comic Cons there. I, I, I really don't know. Um, you know, part of the reason why I started uh, Nerd HQ was because I just... Um, I like, I like the way that we kind of did stuff there or do stuff there. I like, um, I don't know. It's, it's kind of hard to get into. I'm, I'm certainly not trying to slam any, uh, any cons. Uh, I think there's a lot of awesome stuff out there and I had a great time at Star Fury. And by the way, if anybody was at Star Fury that year and, and, uh, came with me to go make Subway sandwiches, that was maybe one of the most epic, uh, memories I'll ever have. I've, uh, marching to the subway at the near the convention center and um, uh, and making a bunch of sandwiches. If you were there, then I love you and I hope you remember that for the rest of your life. Um, t -t 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 -t, let's see, where are we at? Okay, we're over a thousand views. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna dive into this stuff because uh, I've seen some some questions here. Hold on, I'm I'm being texted by the powers uh, that be. Um, let's see, nope, nope. Yep. Oh, oh, Dave was telling me that Kentucky beat Wichita today. So I guess that Wichita story is not so awesome anymore. Um, so, uh, so, so here's, so I, I don't really know, uh, cause there's so many questions that are going on about, uh, Nerd HQ and, um, what, 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 the, what the heck we're, we're doing. Uh, so I'm going to just dive into that, into that for, for a second, if you all don't mind. Um, if you guys have been to the Indiegogo page and you saw the video, uh, you, you kind of know some of this stuff, but I'll, I'll reiterate it. Um, so I, I, I was trying to find a way to, um, to activate the nerd machine, my brand. If you don't know, uh, I have a, a company called the nerd machine and, uh, it's apparel and merchandise and stuff for nerd culture and, so we were trying to find out, well, how do, how do we do well at Comic-Con? How do we sell merch and, uh, and have a brand awareness and all that kind of stuff? And as I thought about it a lot and prayed about it a lot, I was like, look, I think that the best way, if you really want to make uh, an impact with people and you want them to support your brand, the best thing that you can possibly do is give them something that's awesome. And if they like what you do with that, and then they feel led to support you because they go, hey, I like what those guys do, then maybe they'll buy a t-shirt. But I never wanted to make it mandatory. I really genuinely wanted to give something back to the fans and to the celebrities because that's something that I've been a part of uh, down at San Diego Comic-Con for many years now. Not as long as, as some, but, but a good many years now. And, um, and there were just a lot of things that I, I kind of felt like, you know, 
I want to I want to be able to interact with my fans in a more intimate way. I want to I want fans to have hour long Q and A's where they get to ask all the questions, um, and uh, and and photo opportunities and signing opportunities. Um, I wanted to have dance parties uh, because they're the, to me they were they were greatly lacking uh, during that weekend. There were some fun parties, but there wasn't like you know just like some great tunes kicking out and everybody just having a kick ass time. Um, so there was all these, and video games, by the way, as well. Like, an, another big thing was, like, I would get to go to E3, and I'd get to go to CES, because I was a, you know, celebrity or whatever, but I knew that a lot of the people who were at Comic-Con, a lot of just regular folk and fans, they never had access to E3 or, or CES. So I thought to myself, well, if I could, if I could build something and, tr and give it to people for as free as possible, what would that thing look like? Um, and then as we built it and we turned it into this four day, three day, uh, f four day, three night event, uh, it, it turned out to be something that was really powerful. And I, I really still believe in, in, in how powerful that it is because I see the people that walk away from it and, and the lives that it touches and the ways that it brings celebrities and fans together in like really cool and intimate and interactive ways and ways, by the way, that, and correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think they exist anywhere else in the world. Um, I don't know of other places that just gives you that kind of access. And by the way, one of the other things I wanted to do, and, and again, I'm going to keep reiterating this. I have never claimed that Nerd HQ or the Nerd Machine are nonprofit uh, companies or that the Nerd HQ is a nonprofit event. We are a company. We're trying to do well for ourselves in the world. That being said, we've lost money on Nerd HQ every year that we've done it. Do we hope that we actually make money one day? Absolutely. But I would never, ever ask you guys to help me fund an event and take your money to pay me. I would never, ever, ever think of doing that. If I can ever get sponsors to pay enough money where we can actually take care of ourselves at the Nerd Machine, that would be awesome. But the main priority is to give you guys an event that you love. That's my main priority. If I was in this for the money, I would, have, I would have stopped doing it after the first year when I didn't make any money. But that's not why I do it. I do it because I really believe that it means something in the world and I do believe that it has an impact and I, and I do believe in bridging the gap between celebrities and fans. I believe that we as entertainers are only as good as the fans and supporters that, that, that support us and believe in us and continue to watch our television shows and continue to go to our movies and buy our video games or whatever the hell that we do. So that's why I'm trying to do Nerd HQ. And similar to, and please don't, I'm not comparing myself to Radiohead here, okay? But in a similar way that Radiohead uh, released that album that they did and said, hey, pay whatever you feel like it's worth. That's what I'm doing. And by the way, strip away everything else. Strip, strip away all the things about Nerd HQ, except for let's just say the panels, okay? Or, or no, no, not just the panels. By the way, if this is rambling, this is what I, I do this. So please just bear with me. But I'm hoping that this is answering some questions. So, so for me, I was like, look, I, the panels that we provide and the big space that we offer down at Comic-Con, that's, that's what I'm trying to offer you guys and what I'm asking you. If you feel like it's worth at least $5, if you would help continue that, if, if you, I don't want to charge you at the door. I don't want to charge you online. I really don't want to charge anybody for anything. But sponsorship dollars are just tough, and I'm going to I'm going to get to that in a second. But that's why I'm asking you guys for just five dollars. I didn't ask anybody for a million. I didn't ask anybody for a thousand. I said if anybody wants to give anything more than five dollars, I'm more than happy to receive that and put that toward giving you guys a great event. But I'm only asking you for five, okay? And I'm not asking you to produce parties. I'm, I, though, that's all extra stuff on top to just help keeping you and the celebrities that are down there enjoying themselves and having a good time. The thing I'm asking if you think has any value is a giant space for you to come and hang out and relax and charge your phones and spend time with your friends and, and interact with, with, with technology and video games that aren't on the market yet and to have these panels, these hour-long Q&As just for fans that don't exist anywhere else where they also live online and can go and stream uh, to the world. Now, and some people are, are saying, well, well the, you know, I can watch anything online for free. Well, that's true. That's true. But that actually, but it costs us money to do that. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a pretty major thing. Um, I'm sorry. Pe uh, um, so, like, so, for example, uh, this is one of the big concerns that people have is the budget. People are like, how could this possibly cost a million dollars? Ladies and gentlemen. On everything, 
uh, on my on my life. We this is an incredibly expensive thing to do. We could we could do super bare bones uh, and and make it a little bit cheaper, but I guarantee you you would not enjoy it. Uh, it would not be done in the way that it needs to be done for a for you guys to get the most out of it and b for us to hopefully woo sponsors on board so that I never have to crowdfund this thing ever again. I don't like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to ask you guys for money. This is why I never did this the, the first year. I want to just give it to you guys. And I want every dollar that you spend, particularly where there is interaction between fans and celebrities, I want that to all be for a greater purpose. That is where Operation Smile comes in. I wanted there to be something different about what we do at HQ where when a celebrity comes and gives their time and you decide to spend money on that time, that nobody's making any money on that other than people who need it in the world. So that's, that's the nonprofit angle of what Nerd HQ is about. We are not a nonprofit. We, again, we're hoping to do well for ourselves in the world. But until that time comes, I'm still going to keep trying to give you this for free. And I'm, I'm going to keep trying to always give it to you for free. So, so as far as, let me, go, let me talk real quick about sponsors. And, uh, and, and the budget. So a lot of people uh, have been wondering, well, you know, what's the deal? Like, can't you get your, can't you get your stuff together? Can't you, can't you plan better that you can get sponsorship dollars in? Trust me, I wish to God that I was so good at doing this thing that, by the way, we've only done for three years. This is still kind of in its infancy. I wish that sponsors were so gung-ho and ready to go that we had money when we needed it. But the problem, and I kind of said this on my Indiegogo page, the prop, we have a lot of sponsors that are very interested, and by the way, that have given us a lot of money over the years, and I'm really, really grateful to them. But they have money that is committed to so many events along the calendar year. So by the time their money, oh, my recording, oh, that's no good. My recording just terminated unexpectedly. Well, uh, you guys are still watching it live, so hopefully... Hopefully this all still works out. Anyway, so um, so oh, I'm gonna start recording again. All right, all right. Now this is gonna be in two parts. This is this is an epic. This is a saga, folks. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah. So we go to sponsors literally the day after uh, after San, uh, San Diego Comic Con, day after Nerd HQ. Every single year we start planning and start going after sponsors for the next year. This is not out of lack of effort. This is not out of lack of trying. This is just the way the sponsorship dollars and schedules end up meeting up with our responsibilities to make Nerd HQ happen again. That's literally what it is. So typically with sponsorship dollars, we don't get those dollars in until very, very near to the event, if sometimes, sometimes not even until after the event. So I've had to put mine, the Nerd Machine's money into uh, paying for the venue, paying for the production staffs, all that stuff leading up to the event and believing and hoping that all of these conversations that we're having with sponsors and deals that we're brokering all end up uh, paying off and, and I'm able to reimburse myself for all the money that I put out. And as I've said on the Indiegogo page, that kind of worked, that basically worked for the first couple of years. And last year, it really, really didn't work. And it, it was not good. And, and Nerd, Nerd HQ almost didn't happen, and, and, almost, and, I, and the Nerd Machine almost disappeared. I mean, it was that big of a hit. But I really believe in the event, and I wanted to keep doing it because I believe in, in what it's doing in the world. Uh, I, it's very hard to explain. Anyone who's volunteered there knows anyone I, I i literally we 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 finish the event and i and i cry i cry i'm a grown man and i cry and i'm not crying because i'm sad i'm crying because i feel so much the the love of so many people and so many pe lives that are impacted and it's incredible to feel it's tangible it's real and so i can't not so for me i can't not try and do it the next year but i just can't do that financial model anymore it just it doesn't make any sense so i very well could have said hey i'm not going to do nerd hq anymore and people could have said well why don't you crowdfund it and i and by the way th those some fans were suggesting that before i even decided to do it so that's what i'm doing i'm trying to keep it going i'm trying to keep bringing you guys this event um and and Sorry, I know I'm rambling, but I hope everyone's hearing me in this. So, so then going to the budget. So some people are saying, well, why, why are you asking for a million dollars? Guys, I guarantee you, it, it, that's, that's essentially what it costs. It's like $950,000. And that's, 
and it's venue rental is a major part of it. And some people might think, well, you're only doing it in these particular areas. We have to rent more area than you might think we need to rent in order for there not to be conflict for what we do. Uh, and I, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of things I can't necessarily talk about, and I'm not trying to be shady here, but uh, per legal contract stuff, I, I can't I can't necessarily talk about everything. Um, but we have I, hold on, I got an email from somebody from somebody my my business partner. Um, who uh, to to speak on the matter? Um, uh, j just doing the stage alone, building the stage for the conversations for a cause, where we have three cameras and we have microphones for the audience and and for the panelists. Uh, the lighting, uh, we're literally—I mean, we're building walls and 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 a stage. Um, we we built a second stage that the Nerdist used last year in the main concourse. Uh, we've got you know multiple rooms for uh, all kinds of various press and and VIP and activations and whatever hotel rooms. Uh, 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 transportation. I'm not trying to get you to give me money so I can make money. I'm not trying to take your money to give to myself. I'm trying to utilize the financing that you guys will hopefully be uh, led to want to be a part of so that I can keep bringing you guys Nerd HQ. That's, that's really what it comes down to. And the reason why I'm asking for a million is because I can't guarantee that any, any one sponsor is going to be a part of it. So on the off chance, that no sponsors actually want to be a part of it, I still wanted to bring you Nerd HQ. And in the event that we get a whole bunch of sponsorship dollars, I'm going to bring you even more Nerd HQ. I'm going to build another stage, get more panels going, raise more money for charity, keep bringing you guys all the things that you want. So I hope that that, I'm going to go to the questions. Uh, I'm going to go back to the questions here. Oh, there's, there's a, lot, a lot of questions there. Um, um, if anybody has any more like specific questions about like uh, Nerd HQ or concerns about the budget, or or why it costs a million dollars, or um, oh oh you know here's here's something. So the the um, the celebrity. So this is one thing that I just I really feel like I need to clear up. Um, yes, I absolutely want to throw parties for fans and for celebrities, and as much as I wish that that could be the same party. I've talked about this at last year's Nerd HQ. It, that's not an easy thing to do, guys. And and the reason why is because there, I'm sure there are a ton of you guys out there that are super cool, uh, but there are a, a lot of fans that are, get very starstruck, and if they're at a party with uh, a celebrity or a number of celebrities, those celebrities are not necessarily going to feel like they can... Uh, just let loose and enjoy themselves because there's going to be one of these in their face the entire night long. And that's just the reality of it. And so I was trying to, I'm not trying to be elitist. I, I, I don't believe in that. I'm actually trying to bridge gaps between us and allow you guys a really intimate and fun access with the celebrities that you love and allow us an opportunity to to talk with you and converse with you and take pictures with you and, and all these things that I think that you're desiring. Correct me if I'm wrong, if, 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 you, do, if you don't. Um, but that's why I, I had, I have to do what I do and I'm not, I'm not trying to segregate people. I'm just trying to give everyone, whether you're on a television show or you watch that television show, I'm trying to give everybody a space where they feel safe and they can, they can, uh, a calm from the storm and, and they can have a drink and they can pick their nose or they can get all sweaty and gross while they're dancing on a dance floor and it's not going to end up all over TMZ or, or a whole bunch of other places online because that's the reality. The reality is unless that unless there's some kind of protection, you don't feel safe because technology has made it that you can be, uh, a picture or a video can be taken of you at any time. So I really hope that you guys understand that. And, and furthermore, by the way, I had no intention of using in the, your money to go throw a party for a, a, a party that, you're, that you can't come into. I, was at, I have every intention of using what sponsorship money or my own money, if necessary, to, to give the celebrities that, that place. So for anyone out there who might think differently or if that's not been clear, forgive me. Anything that has not been clear about this campaign, I, I, I'll take full, full responsibility for anything that is... Um, being misunderstood, um, but but please, uh, please have faith in me. Please trust me. I feel like I've, I feel like I've 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 tried really hard to 
give as much of myself as I can and try to do good in the world and particularly with my own fans, which is, by the way, which is part of the reason why I thought this crowdfunding campaign would work because I have, you know, a certain amount of people who follow me on Twitter and I thought, oh, these people like me and they believe in me and, and I know, by the way, a ton of you uh, have believed in me and have believed in this campaign. Um, but there are a lot that I don't, for whatever reason, you don't, you, you haven't necessarily been motivated to, to get to that place yet. And all I'm asking you for is just to trust me. I'm not trying to screw anybody. I'm not trying to take advantage of anybody. I am genuinely trying to just do something that's really cool and fun and awesome and, and, and paradigm shifting. Look, I know it's not what people typically do. I don't like doing what people typically do. I think that sometimes you need to challenge those norms and you need to offer people something that's new and different. And uh, so that's what HQ uh, is about. And if you then feel that, if you go, you know what, I like that guy and I like his company and therefore I've, I want to go buy a t-shirt, rock and roll. If you don't, that's fine too. I just hope that you feel good about HQ and what we do and the opportunities that we offer there. So I hope that, I hope that makes sense. I'm, um, I'm rambling a lot here. Um, uh, uh, let's see. Um, uh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I know it's so hard to like check my Twitter stream and talk to you at the same time. Um, uh, if, if we raise more money, get more sponsors, are you going to uh, use it all for this year or bank some for next year? That's an excellent question. I really have no idea. I want to build out this year to be the best year that it can be. If we reach a point where it's kind of like critical mass and it's like beyond this, it's going to it's gonna be too big and not intimate enough. By the way, this question is from Emily Ann at MK5, at MK512. Uh, I think I got that right. Um, so, so beyond that, if we can bank it for next year, absolutely, I'd love to do that. You know what I mean? I, I uh, whatever the best scenario is to, to to again keep bringing you guys Nerd HQ. I want to do this as long as I have life in me. I, uh, anyone who's been there, you you I, you know this. And if you guys have watched any of the panels online, if you've seen them after the fact on YouTube, they're really special. They don't exist anywhere else. That kind of these moments don't exist anywhere else. Not that I know of. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, I don't think that they do. Um, I want Tom, <laughs> I want Tom HQ. Hey, I want Hiddleston back as well. I'm gonna do everything I can. Uh, the the Miss Melly. Um, uh, I'd like to get Chris Evans as well. That's, I'm trying to think. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. Forgive me if I'm not answering all your questions. I'm, I'm really I really am trying to get the heart of the concerns that people have because I, I don't want anybody to have any concerns and I certainly I just so you know it, it really I like it, it it tears me up to know that anybody might think that I'm even like trying to screw you like I, I, I'm really not I uh, I'm, I'm trying to offer something that just that I did that I felt like was missing and that and that could be really special um, for fans and for celebrities and um, and, and do right, and by the way, and again, I'm going to keep saying this, and do right for myself and my business partners and, and, uh, and, 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 do, and do well for us in the world. Because I don't think, and, and I've spoken on this before, but I, this is what I call conscientious capitalism. I don't think there's anything wrong with having an idea that you believe in and then wanting to make a business out of that while simultaneously doing good in the world and, and touching people's lives. And that through that, if they feel led if they believe in you and trust in you and go, yeah, I, I dig that, then supporting you back, you know, that's, that's all I'm trying to do here. I'm not, I'm not claiming to be a martyr. I'm not claiming to be a nonprofit. I'm not saying any of that stuff. So please just, just uh, hear me when I'm telling you that. Please, please hear me. Um, uh, do, uh, I have many fans in Turkey. Hi, Turkey. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Turkey. That's, that sounds strange to say hello to a bird and a nation. Um, uh, instead of having uh, instead of having a VIP regular party, why not have an interactive booth from the from the VIP party so we're part of it? This is something I've wanted to do every single year. This is something I'm trying to implement this year. I've always wanted to have some kind of tie-in. What I'm trying to do is with the photo booths. Oh, by the way, that's another thing that costs money. If you're wondering about the budget stuff, the photo booths cost money, and all the charging stations, and all the furniture, and uh, anyway, lots of lots and lots of things. Um, I've wanted to do a photo booth thing where. 
uh, I have like um, whiteboards and like in the fan party you guys can like write messages to the celebs and the celebs can like take pictures back with whiteboards and say hi back to you. I don't know. I thought that'd be a fun way to 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 bridge that stuff. And by the way, and also just so you guys know, I, I think I, I I should spend a second just talking about this. I'm not just throwing celebrity parties. Thursday night is your party. Last year we had thousands of people there, and and I invite my celebrity friends to come by and say hi if they if they feel cool doing that. And quite a few came last year. So I'm I'm doing everything I can. I'm doing everything I can to motivate that side and your side so that we can all be cool and have fun and give each other our space and and know that it's we're we're, we're working toward it and we're working toward it you know um but yes i want to do everything i can to give you guys as much as i can and give them as much as they can as i can for them um and if that means whiteboards or the photo booth i'm about it i will do i will do that i i've been wanting to do that so great uh laura underscore kate 008 great yes i'm about it um uh to do and uh, uh still still working on it still working on it bear with me uh oh people texting me probably thinking i'm not saying enough or the right thing oh uh you're talking a little fast i'll slow it down um, um, okay, uh, back to this. Oh, wait, no, I didn't finish my bit about the parties. So, uh, Thursday night is a party for you guys. That's just, that's, that's what it is. Um, and I try to get people to come by. And then Friday night is the, is the party that is, yeah, it's an industry party with the celebrities and the sponsors. That's what that is. And then on Saturday night, is kind of my only opportunity because I'm doing the doing HQ the whole weekend. I have like my own little thing with my friends that I do, and then the rest of the venue is for you guys to have yet another dance party. So I'm trying to keep it as balanced and as even and as fair as I possibly can. And again, I reiterate that I w I'm not trying to use your money for things that you have no access to. I'm trying to use your money to keep bringing you the things that you have access to because I think that you can because I believe that you still want it, you know? Um, um, could, uh, do, do, do. Oh, could I ask for volunteers to build stages, booths, etc., not just for manpower, but for materials too? I, sure, possibly. If people actually want to uh, donate their time, the, the problem is that our volunteers are not necessarily builders. <laughs> so, um, but if there's like a super experienced crew of, contractors that want to donate their time and materials to help us build a stage to do that stuff I'm I'm about it again because we're not a nonprofit I don't know how comfortable they would feel doing that it's a it's a really tricky thing all in all um, but look I'm I'm open to any and all options to try and bring costs down if people want to be about that um, um, let's see Let's see. Sorry, guys. I'm just trying to sift through all these. Um, I answered that one. Uh, would I take Nerd HQ on the road? I'd I'd love to. Um, but again, I I gotta I gotta try and take care of one thing at a time. And right now, it's just keeping Nerd HQ alive uh, at San Diego Comic Con. Um, and you know, and part of part of that is also it's uh, the amount of um, panelists that you can get at any given time. So it's difficult to get. You know, at, during San Diego Comic Con, there are so many celebrities there, uh, and so and they're very very busy, by the way. So uh, trying to just get an hour of their time to come and do a panel is uh, can be a big ask sometimes. And all everyone who's come out and, and helped us. Uh, so far has been tremendous. Um, so if there were ways of getting as much talent to other places to do a nerd HQs, I'd love, I'd love to do that. Um, when, is <laughs> uh, when, not if, cause you will, the $1 million mark is reached. Will you sing us all a song? I'm going to tell you what. 
I'm going to sing you a song whether we reach it or not. At the end of this campaign, I don't, it doesn't matter where we're at, I'm going to sing you a song. I don't know what that song is going to be, uh, but I will do that for you. JJ, whose Twitter handle is T-W-L-O-R. No JJ in there at all. Um, oh, wow. Um, I just had somebody say that uh, the first time that they, uh, we have a, no, you know, actually, you know what? Sorry. I got that. Somebody texted me that that's part of the Twitter feed and I don't even need to, it was just a really nice story that somebody just texted me. Anyway, sorry, guys. Hey, you're getting a window into my soul right now. This is what, this is what happens when Zach has a live stream and a Twitter feed and uh, is just trying to make things right. Uh, I guess. Um, let's see. Um, all right. I'm going to, I'm going to put, I'm going to put this back. I'm going to put Nerd HQ on, on the, on the back burner just for a second. Uh, so I can answer some other just fun questions if, uh, if that's okay. And then if the, if you have more questions, if things are still not unanswered, please keep, keep asking them. Um, but let's get into some of these here. Um, well, I guess they're pretty much all Nerd HQ related now. Um, so I guess, I don't know. Oh, oh, uh, here, here's another thing that I wanted to talk about. Um, so, so, oh, actually, hold on. I, I need a sip of coffee because clearly I'm not amped enough. Mm -hmm. oh, that's good coffee. Some good Java. All right, so um, I really, really want to clear up this Chuck movie stuff. Um, so on my Facebook, and I've hinted at this a couple of times, um, about what this campaign means to me and how I believe it correlates to a Chuck movie. Um, and then I saw someone on Twitter the other day was really upset, and they, um, they thought I was essentially kind of holding – making the movie hostage if I don't get Nerd HQ funded. And trust me, please, please hear me this. All you Chuck fans out there, I want nothing more than to continue the stories of our characters. I loved the family that we have. I love, I continue to love the family that we had over on Chuck. And I love you guys. And I think that you know that. I, I, I think that I've made it pretty clear in every interview that I've done and every moment that I've had an opportunity to tell you that I love and appreciate you guys very, very much. I am not holding a Chuck movie hostage. I'm not saying if you don't fund this, I won't go make that happen. To, to help explain what I meant by any of those comments. Um, crowdfunding is a very crazy thing as I am witnessing personally right now um, and it can cut in a lot of different ways and not always positively um, so one of the biggest I, I kind of kind of have to back backtrack a little here but one, one of the, the the biggest reason why I don't have any perks uh, I'll address this and then I'll get to that one of the biggest reasons I don't have perks in the um, in our nerd HQ uh, campaign that some people understand me on, and I, I think some people are still unclear and wishing that there were perks or feeling that there should be and I, that it's a mistake to not have the perks. I said there's three reasons that I give on, on, uh, on the Indiegogo campaign page, and I'll reiterate them, but I want to make something very clear. Two of those things basically have to do with the money that it takes to do perks and fulfilling those perks, the money and energy and time and all that stuff, and that we could put that toward Nerd HQ itself. And I, and I do believe that Nerd HQ is actually the perk. I think that by funding this, I'm giving you guys the, the best possible uh, uh, final product, right? So that I do believe that. But that's the, the reason why I did no perk structure. And this is one of the issues that I have with crowdfunding kind of in general, is because I... I really do believe that on a, in a very like altruistic, fundamental level, whatever, I, I, I want to make things as communal and as fair as I possibly can make them, um, which means 
that if you only have five dollars to give I don't think you should be any less rewarded for someone that gives a hundred and by the way that's also why I didn't ask anybody for a hundred if you look at the Indiegogo page you'll see a bunch of buttons that go up to a thousand dollars that was just so if people actually felt led to give more they had an easier way to do it because apparently and this is what I was told that in order to recode where the the um, where all those perk and, and donor amounts go it's not super easy like yeah to put in like a whatever amount you want is an extra step or whatever so we were just like look let's just try and make it as easy as possible but that's why i'm not i'm not asking for anything other than five dollars i'm really really not i really believed and i still hope that if enough people only give five we can make this happen if people wanted to give more i love you i i, I so I'm, I'm so grateful for that but i in fact by the way just so everybody knows i originally wanted to do one dollar I was like, what if, what if we all just gave $1 and see how powerful that could be? Given, given where we're at right now, I, we might have been a, a, a lot farther behind with just $1. I don't know. But anyway, getting back to, I really, 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 really believe in making things fair and, and making them accessible to everyone, regardless of whatever their monetary standing would be. You know what I mean? Um, so to that extent, when it comes to crowdfunding in general, I, there are things that keep hitting me. And I go, I don't know, and, and people have asked me, why don't you kickstart a, a Chuck movie? And it's because I don't want to go that route. Um, I don't, I'm the only one who's, that I know of that is that has expressed interest in making a Chuck movie, or at least spearheading making the Chuck movie. Uh, and if that's the case, I'm gonna try and do it to the best of my ability in the way that I believe it to be best made. And so what this was, the whole point of correlating the two was, I wanted to see if we could do a campaign that wasn't super perk heavy, where I where people were paying $1,000 and getting a bunch of stuff promised to them, but rather if they were just happy with whatever the, the thing was. It could be Nerd HQ, it could be anything else. I just wanted it to see if people were down for the idea of spending a little amount of money for a a bigger budget if you will if that makes any sense so I and I thought five dollars to a million dollars would be an interesting litmus test um, a Chuck movie the whole idea what I've always wanted to do with a Chuck movie is you would never spend any more than twenty dollars I'm never going to offer a perk or a thing where it's like for a thousand dollars you would get this and that and another thing where somebody who only had twenty dollars to spare gets left out of all that stuff I didn't want to do that I didn't feel I don't feel right about that um, and by the way and more than that I feel like it really speaks to how many people actually want a Chuck movie there have been other things that have been funded um, and and got a lot of money doing it but in the overall it was they're they're funded by not uh, as many people not, uh, not, not, not not as many people but I anyway the point is there's like 10 million of you Chuck fans out there. Uh, I think, I hope, I don't know. I'm talking about internationally. So if half of you, if 5 million Chuck fans all gave $20, we could easily make the most kick-ass movie you have ever seen. But that's, that's, that's why I was saying these are all business model things. These are all things that I'm trying to see if they work because that's ultimately the way I want to do a Chuck movie, if that makes any sense. If you guys don't, if you're a Chuck fan and you don't have, and you don't have any desire to see Nerd HQ happen, that's totally fine. I, I, I'm not, I'm not angry about that, and I would never deny you a Chuck movie. Um, it was really more of a business model experiment. It was me trying to figure out is this way that I want to ultimately do a Chuck movie even something that people will get behind? M kind of more micro crowdfunding or, or, or small amount uh, resourcing. Um, so that's, that's what I meant by that. Uh, so please, anyone out there who thinks I'm trying to play like a, um, play the Chuck movie card to like, you know, play with people's emotions or whatever, I am absolutely not doing that whatsoever. And that's why I said in my Facebook post as well, please, guys, I don't have any permission from Warner. This has nothing to do with Warner Brothers. 
it, they've never, nobody said, hey, if I get Nerd HQ funded, I get to make a Chuck movie, and if I don't get it funded, I can't make a Chuck movie. One, I, I have had one conversation with Warner Brothers, and they're very excellent people, and they said that they're open to the idea of us possibly doing that one day. And so I said, cool, let me go try and figure out on my end the best way that I can go and help lead that charge. Uh, so that's that. that that's, that's all that. Um, again, feel free to ask me a <laughs> ask me. A, Question on Twitter if that um, if that doesn't make any sense. Um, <laughs> so, wow, there's some very uh, some very interesting very interesting tweets here having to do with me taking my shirt off. Not gonna happen. Excellent, great try though. Um, and and more tweets. Oh, and for anybody out there who wants Chuck to become a series again, I I, I that I don't think is gonna happen. I would like to make movies. I think that's a much easier and doable thing. It's much easier to get like the whole cast back together again. Yvonne and Adam and Ryan and Sarah and uh, and, and Vic and Scott and Mark and you know, everybody and the crew. You know, it's, it's a couple months of, if not a month, a month to two months of time. Um, a series is just a major commitment, you know, and people have their, their families and lives and, you know. So I'm sorry if you actually want it to be a show again. I don't think that's going to happen. But I, I, I will keep trying and figuring out the best way to possible to make a Chuck movie, if I can do it, if I can do it. Um, 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 uh, uh, oh, 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 this is a great question. What's your plan if you don't make uh, your goal of a million dollars? That's an excellent question, by the way. I, we think about it all the time. We're only, we're, we're still shy of 200,000 right now. Um, look, our plan is to absolutely do Nerd HQ. Uh, I, and I mean, barring anything super weird happening between now and then, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. We're going to do nerd HQ this year. We are still very much actively trying to get sponsors. Again, going back to what I said before, I was asking for a million dollars in the event that we got no sponsorship dollars whatsoever. If we're able to still get sponsorship dollars, if, and we don't make our million, hopefully that can all cobble together and we can still make nerd HQ. Even if I have to put some of my own money into it again this year. What I am, what I will go e even farther is to say is, I I have to play every year by year because I don't know where my finances are going to be or where sponsors are going to be or whatever. Um, based on this on this crowdfunding, I don't uh, I, I don't I don't <laughs> I don't know that this is the way to do it. Uh, I don't know. Uh, this is all an experiment. Uh, well, not an experiment. I mean, this is us trying to make it happen. Uh, so you know, we just got to play every year by every year by ear, and um, but but to your question, Autumn Petro, I am going to do everything in my power to make Nerd HQ happen this year, even if it's the last year, and hopefully as many of you guys can come out to it as possible and see what it was that all the fuss was about, and hopefully anyone who can't come to Nerd HQ this year, you just go and watch these panels online, uh, and see how special they are. And I'll also be taking questions via uh, Twitter this year. So even if you're watching online from Turkey or Singapore or wherever, we can still include you in that conversation and you know get some of those questions answered. Um, uh, let's see. Um, um, oh, uh, Elizabeth, Eliz, Liz Gmaz. Um, I appreciate. Uh, I. Uh, she said that I shouldn't care what the naysayers are saying or writing, um, and and I just want to and, and there's a reason I want to address this. Um, I really appreciate everyone out there, all the support that I felt over this campaign. Um, anyone who's come to my defense, uh, please don't attack anybody. Uh, by the way, don't feel like you need to attack anybody who might or you might feel is attacking me or the Nerd Machine or Nerd HQ. Uh, you know, violence begets violence in that regard, and I and we we really don't need to do that. Um, Elizabeth, just to address you real quick, I don't feel this right now. What I'm doing with you guys right now, I don't believe this to be addressing naysayers. Um, I really, really want truth to be known, and if there is any even slight confusion, if there are any slight questions. And if any of that has any even slightly to do with us at the Nerd Machine or myself or our campaign page or anything, then I absolutely want to make sure that I do everything I can 
to ensure that the truth is out there because I have, I'm not hiding anything. I never have attempted to hide anything. Uh, this, a lot of this honestly kind of came out of nowhere. But by the way, when you're in a bubble, you know, when you're kind of in your own little vacuum is as we tend to be in our lives and in our businesses, you know, we looked at the page, at the Indiegogo page, and we thought, yeah, this makes sense. Uh, we hit all the points. We make it clear on the page, like the money raised for the campaigns, not going to Operation Smile, that we raise money at uh, Nerd HQ for Operation Smile, um, that these are all the things that we do at the event. But if that information was misleading at all, if that was somehow confusing, uh, this is not me trying to defend myself. This is me really genuinely wanting people to feel comfortable with what we're doing and what, what we're asking them to be a part of doing with us. Um, but I appreciate your heart and I appreciate your support and um, I, I, so, so thank you. But, but know that um, I know my heart, you know. I, I don't feel like I need to defend myself to anybody, but I genuinely want the truth to be known because I, I really believe in truth. So, uh, so there's that. Um, um, let's see here. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Juan Nani, how, how Nani Johnson? I don't know. I don't know that I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, if Nerd Issue happens, how do you get a good chance at volunteering and ensuring panel tickets? Um, and you're welcome for doing the Q and A. Thank you for being here at the Q and A. Thank you for taking the time. Wonder how many people are. All right, we got we got a lot of people that are watching. That's good. Um, so uh, I mean, the the best chance at volunteering is just submitting uh, an application to volunteer as when 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 that gets announced. Um, we try to keep mixing it up and, and being equal opportunists about it uh, because we've been doing it for three years now, and there have been some volunteers that have really just gone above and beyond and have been so excellent. We also want to reward them if they want to come back and volunteer with us again. Uh, so I don't know the best way to do it other than just be honest, talk about uh, you know who you are and what you wh why you want to volunteer, um, and uh, so there's that. And then as far as securing panel tickets, so guys, uh, a couple things. One for everyone who's who's bought tickets for us and our panels, um, so sorry for any kerfuffles or shenanigans with the ticket selling systems that we've used in the past. We keep trying. <laughs> we keep trying to find the right one. We think we found it. We think we've figured it out. Um, it's just very difficult when you're selling only like 250 of something to a lot more than 250 people who want to buy them. So I have no idea the best way to do it other than literally just being at your keyboard and ready to go. And because we defer to San Diego Comic-Con and their schedules, uh, because they are the mothership and they are the ones who are bringing so many of these people into town, we don't we wait to see what their schedules are going to be before we announce ours. So a lot of times they are very impromptu. Uh, so apologies for how last minute they can be, but that's just kind of how we have to do it. Uh, so I don't know the best way to secure those tickets other than just constantly being on the ready. Uh, if that makes any sense. All right, hold on. Getting, getting more. Uh, um, yep. Okay. Um, um, oh, can I talk about first date? Uh, uh, this is from uh, Kira underscore Shannon. Uh, first date was an incredible experience in my life. I wouldn't trade it, trade it for anything. Uh, it was one of the most impactful, powerful growth experiences of my life. It was a bucket list thing. I got to check off going and living in New York and doing Broadway, and I'm so stoked to have been able to do that. Uh, it was super hard. <laughs> it was really scary, uh, but I'm really grateful. Yeah, I was sad when it closed. Um, also kind of oddly relieved in a way because eight shows a week is really, really hard to do. Um, worst, funniest onstage moment. Uh, the, the worst moments were any time a drink would spill because there were no scene breaks. So you just had a mess all over the stage. And kind of along with that, with the worst, funniest is my microphone went out one night and I had to go off stage and downstairs and get a new mic put on while the audience was all sitting there waiting for me to come back. And so I made a joke about having diarrhea to... Uh, Krista, my co-star, and everybody laughed, and we continued on with the show. But um, anybody who came and saw First Date, by the way, thank you so much. Uh, it, it was a really, it was a really amazing experience, and it was so great to share that with so many fans of Chuck or Tangled or you know a number of people who came who have supported me over my career. It, it really, really, really means a lot. Um, let's see. 
Uh, thank you, Australia. Camille, Camille LLL, or III, depending on what font you're using. Uh, thank you very much for that. I love you, Australia. Um, okay, let me go up. I'm going back up. This is so odd. Uh, I d will there ever be a first date movie? I don't know about that. Uh, I think it'd be fun, though. I think a first date movie would be fun. Mm. Is my fr <laughs> is my fridge magnetic? You know what's crazy? It's not. The side of it is, but the front of it is not. Does anybody else have this problem? The front of your fridge is no longer magnetic because they use whatever kind of fake metal. I don't know what the hell it is. It's like some weird alloy, but the, you can't put a magnet on it anymore. What has the world come to when you can't put a magnet on the front of a fridge? Um, if you're signed up for Nerd HQ emails, will we get updates on when we can buy tickets for photo ops? I, yes, we will make that happen. We, please, uh, we'll get you on. Get, sign, get, uh, I, I, <laughs> use your word, Zach. Uh, at the Nerd Machine or at Nerd HQ, or you can go to Nerd HQ at the Nerd Machine or at the Indiegogo page, whatever we can do to help you guys get on an email list so you will always get the updates of whatever we're doing. Um, you love Terrified? The song Terrified with Cat McPhee, thank you so much. I love that song too. I love singing with Cat McPhee. It was a tremendous experience. I was really grateful for that. Um, oh, somebody's asking me, can I address concerns towards spending a million dollars for an event that raises only 250000 for charity? Excellent, excellent point. I, I feel like I, I talked about this a little bit or I kind of addressed it in some ways before, but, but please let me address this now. Um, if it's not already clear. Our event is is not a charity event. It's uh, it's not a non a nonprofit event. Um, it, the whole putting the a nonprofit as as a part of it for me was just icing on the cake. Uh, I w I wanted everyone. I wanted the celebrities and fans to walk away from specifically from the fan and celebrity interactions. I wanted everyone to feel that much better about what those interactions would be. So I added the element of well, why don't we just make all those interactions, the panels, the photo ops, and the signings, make those benefit a charity? Um, I never set out to make a charity event. I wanted to make an event that was awesome, and that happened to be one element of it. So anyone who's saying, well, why are you asking us for a million dollars, or if you're concerned of why I'm asking for a million dollars to raise $250,000 for charity, I'm not asking for your money to help to, to raise money. I'm asking for your money to give you an awesome event that gives you all these panels and this access and these video games and this place to hang out and charging stations and whatever and the parties that your parties um, and the and the nonprofit aspect is just icing it's just bonus it's just extra reward if that makes any sense I hope that makes sense um, I'm always looking for incentivization I'm always looking for more ways to just make something cooler if that makes any sense you know what i mean because look re genuinely i i do other things with operation smile that are just straight fundraisers you know what i mean and i'll go out to people and say hey let's go raise money for this it was just how do we just make it that one extra step more powerful how do we how do we give give something or how do we activate this in yet another way where people walk away from it and just feel better about their time and money spent at the event so so that's what it is um, if, I, I think that makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, then somebody please tell me it doesn't make sense, and I'll and I'll try and uh, make more sense. I, I suppose. Uh, are, am I going to do more musicals? Uh, I'd like to. Jovia Leselgi. Um. Let's see here. Any plans to get back on Smodcast with Kevin Smith to promote? I'd love to. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be in L.A. for a few weeks doing a lot of different things, and I would love to get back there and talk to Kevin about it. Uh, if he'll have me. I love Kevin. He's had me on uh, uh, before, and, I, well, clearly you said you'd get back to Smodcast. <laughs> I'm just going to keep saying things that are obvious. Um, but uh, that would be great, yeah. And I really, and I dig him. I dig what he does, and I appreciate, like, the just honest banter that you get to have on his podcast. Um, uh, what was it like becoming an Asgardian in the Marvel Universe? Bomb diggity. That's, that's how that felt. 
uh, from oh Jedi Chuckster. You've got a couple in here. You've got a couple in here. Sly doggy. Um, okay, I'm gonna go uh, <laughs> because I said kerfuffle during the live stream. The day was made for uh, Ange three two three. You're welcome. Glad I can make your day with a good kerfuffle. Uh, can anyone volunteer for Nerd HQ, for example, wheelchair bound? Absolutely. Uh, I, we'd be honored to have you. P just let us know in your uh, app volunteer application, and we'll figure out a way to give you an experience volunteering. That that sounds amazing. Um, <laughs> what brought back the Mohawk? Honestly, <laughs> this the sides and back of my head they they get real froey real fast. So I'm a big fan of the high and tight. Um, and, uh, and with whatever's left on top, I just like experimenting with different things, but it's not really a, it's not really a mohawk now. It's kind of more of like a side swipey. It's kind of more of a, I don't know, like, uh, I'm trying to feel more mad menish with it. If that makes any sense. I need a scotch and a cigarette. Actually, no, don't smoke. I quit smoking. Anyone out there was concerned with me being a smoker. I don't do that anymore. And you shouldn't either. It's horrible for you. Oh, look, I'm getting more, more texts. From people who are wondering why I'm rambling, I'm sure, or not saying. <laughs> Someone wants me to do a Tom Hiddleston impression. <laughs> no. <laughs> not going to happen. No. I might do that at Nerd HQ, though. I might do that. He did a very good impression of me, though. It was okay. You know what? Actually, I'm going to take that back. It was an okay impression of me. He did a very good impression of Chris Evans. And he did a spot-on impression of a Velociraptor from, from uh, Jurassic Park. Um, but do I think people are not donating because they feel that they are too far from Nerd HQ to experience it? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. But for anybody out there who is on the fence still or wondering why, um, look, I, like I've said before, I mean, we, it's basically this like kind of crazy wonky talk show for, you know, that you get 24 hours of and, it, you know, hour-long Q and A's just for fans that you get to watch um, and that don't exist otherwise. So if you're if you're wondering why, if you you know you live elsewhere and you can't make it to Nerd HQ, if you're wondering why you you should donate money, it's it's if you think that having that content brought to you is if it's if that's worth five dollars, then uh, if you feel like that's worth it for you, then that maybe that's why I I, I would that's why that's that would be my plea to you. I think it's worth that. I think you'll really enjoy it. Um, I know I do. I, I think it's really good stuff and really powerful. And um, let's see, uh, what else? Uh, duh, duh, duh. What about fan-run Nerd HQ street teams for spreading the word to a wider audience that may not know about it, guys? Rock the Casbah. You want to go talk about it? anybody? If you guys want to go talk about Nerd HQ, I love for you to talk about Nerd HQ. I'd love for it to go viral. I'd love for everyone to know about it. Uh, I, I'm I I really believe in it. Um, and maybe a lot of people just don't know about it. You know, I did have somebody tell me the other day on the Facebook Q and A. They were like, you know, I just found out about it a week ago, and I th I think it's great. But you know, maybe you need to get it out there more. I mean, I'm, it's not for lack of trying. Believe me. I, I, I've done many interviews about it. I've talked about it on talk shows. I'm doing things like this. I'm on Twitter about it probably, you know, ad nauseum. Uh, and I don't like bugging people and imposing on them, by the way. Um, um, after the 33 days left until the end of crowdfunding, is it possible to extend it? I don't know. Uh, but I don't, I, I, don't, I don't know that I'd want to. Um, I feel like, you know... Not to get too spiritual or whatever, but I feel like that's the time that God gave us, and we're going to do what we can with the time that God gives us. And uh, so, you know, again, and whatever we raise, we raise. Um, I'm going to do everything I can to keep to to bring you the event, regardless. Um, um, Uh, what else do we got? Um, what type of acting role would you want to do next? I don't know. Uh, something meaty, something gritty, actually. Like, uh, 
I don't know, a bad guy? I think being a bad guy would be pretty fun. I feel like I've continued to play guys that are good guys, and I love playing a good guy. I love characters of good hearts and that care about other people and um, and that do right in the world and fight for right in the world. Like when I play Fable, I feel like I need to restart the game if I ever even accidentally do something wrong and get like, like you know, like a, an evil point on me. Uh, I I'm, I'm always in the hero category and never the villain. Although I do love Deadpool. I think Deadpool would be awesome. I've said that before. Uh, but I do. But I. But I think as far as an acting experience is concerned, I would like to play like grittier, dirtier, darker roles. I think that'd be fun. Whatever that role is, I don't know. Um, can we? Can you help find potential sponsors in any way? Uh, I maybe. But I would say, I mean, we have, we've, we've gone to everybody. everybody well, I think, you know, essentially, everybody's aware. But I, I, I also, let me make that also really clear. Sponsors are great. They're great people. We've had great sponsors in the past. I'm, I'm not blaming sponsors for us not being able to do what we've needed to do or why we've gone to crowdfunding. I understand that they have certain schedules that they need to stay on. Uh, it just wasn't really adding up for us in a way that was financially sound or feasible to do in the ways that we had done it in the past. That said, I would love if there was one sponsor who loved this event and loved what it did and was like, we're with you, we're in 100%, we're going to do it every year, and I wouldn't have to do anything else. And I could just go and spend time with you guys and, and work on making the best event that I can make every year. Because it, it, it's hard. Raising money is really hard. And, I, and again, I don't like imposing on people. But I, but I know that I believe in it enough to keep fighting for it. Um, if you happen to know a sponsor that doesn't know about us and that, <laughs> that has a lot of money that they want to use at Nerd HQ, shoot us an email at the Nerd Machine. Um, will this live stream be available for viewing? Jedi Chuckster again. How are you getting these? Uh, will this live stream be available for viewing later? I hope so. Uh, the, re the recording stopped at like the 20-minute mark or something, and now we're at another, we're almost at 50 minutes again, so we'll try and piece both those together so you can watch them later. That was the idea, anyway. I want people to be able to go back to this and reference this if they have any questions. I, I really, 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 guys, the biggest reason I wanted to do this is because I don't want you guys to be concerned about anything, and I don't want you thinking that I'm trying to take advantage of you in any way or being dishonest or anything. I'm really, really not. Um, uh, more. Uh, yes, I'm being told. Um, the 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 powers that be are telling me. Yes, absolutely. Uh, it will be available to watch later on. Um, what is what what is my favorite part uh, of doing? Um. Oh, sorry. So, I'm so sorry. I'm I'm having to track a thousand different things. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go like ten more minutes. We're we're at like oh, just about fifty minutes right now. So I'm gonna do ten more minutes. I'm telling the people who are texting me as well. I'm doing ten more minutes. Um, my favorite thing about Nerd HQ. Um, uh, just uh, making people happy. Uh, I've I've said it in interviews before, but I really believe that uh, as much as you can be created to do something in life. And to do something on this on this earth, um, it, I mean, if that's if that if that is a real thing, I believe it's a real thing. I, I'm not trying to impose that on anyone else, but I do believe it's a real thing. I do think that we all have a purpose to serve uh, in our own lives and our fellow man and women. And um, I love acting. I love directing and, and writing and producing and all the things in, in the world that I've been so blessed to be a part of. Uh, but, you know, maybe more than anything else, I just, I really like, I really like making people happy. Um, and I get to do that as an entertainer. And I'm really grateful that I get to do that as an entertainer. And I, I'm grateful that that's part of what it is to entertain people, you know. But there's so many other ways that you can make people happy. And make them smile and make them laugh, and uh, God, it is, it's incredible. Uh, I love going and introing and outroing every panel at Nerd HQ and having five minutes on both ends to like shoot the shit with you guys and talk about stuff and 
answer questions and you know if, if it means something to you and it and it and it gives you just a little bit of connection and to feel acknowledged you know that's one of the things by the way I, I tell a lot of people you know I've talk to various people who work in our business and they say you know they get they, they it's a it's a weird dynamic if you guys don't know this already it's a very strange dynamic to be a celebrity or whatever the hell that is uh, you know you hear stuff all the time like celebrities are people too well they are they actually really physically are they are human beings and some of them suck because some human beings just suck you know but most of them don't and most of them are, you know, especially actors, they're vulnerable and they're sensitive. And, and it's really hard uh, when your life is put on display for the whole world and people are attacking you or they don't like you or they don't like your face. I mean, can you imagine what it's like where you're out there in the, in the world? I mean, <laughs> case in point, I cut my hair and I'll go on my Twitter feed and I'll have people just be like, your hair looks dumb. I'm like, what? What? I, I'm sorry. I don't remember asking your opinion about what my hair looked like. I don't. That doesn't offend me, by the way. I mean, well, I'm I, I'm not the type of person that gets like really cut or hurt by that. But you got to know, like, it it affects people, and and celebrities genuinely are human beings, and um, so it can get really weird when you have people wanting from you all the time, and. Like at, at Comic Con, Comic Con's a really gnarly experience. I mean, even even aside from the fan experiences, there's so much press that one has to do while they're down there. That your people and your team or whatever are pulling you to and pushing you toward, and they got to do a photo shoot here, and you got to do an interview here, and you got to stop by this little spot, and then you got to go over here, and you know it's a it's a gnarly thing. So anyone who goes down to give their time down there is they're they're walking into a situation that's very very intense which is again part of the reason why i wanted to give fans and celebrities alike uh an oasis just a little oasis just a place where you can breathe just a little bit and by the way i know i'm tangenting here and i i'm going to get back to making people happy um but just while i'm on the topic of just san diego comic-con in general um and I've said this before, um, those guys and gals who uh, put on the actual convention are superheroes in their own right. Those guys, I'm saying, I'm using guys as a general term, <laughs> forgive me ladies. Those people, <laughs> that grouping, um, it is no easy task. I mean, it's no easy task doing Nerd HQ. I can only imagine the infrastructure, and I've talked to them about it. Dave and I, my partner Dave and I, went down to San Diego and we sat down with their whole team and they explained to us, you know, like all of the paramedics and all of the all of the uh, cops and firemen and the infrastructure of downtown San Diego of that they're responsible for, while 200,000 people uh, dive on the gas lamp in that area and how all those, all those pieces need to work together. Um, it is no easy task. So for anyone out there uh, who is, you know, celebrities or fans alike who are uh, down there and, and you know, wondering how that stuff even comes together or you're feeling like uh, how, uh, how, how to best navigate those waters, trust me, those guys are hard at work uh, doing that and and I want to make very clear that um, I'm very appreciative of them and uh, and and the work that they do. And um, so anyway, that, that I just was thinking about Comic Con and uh, and in general because uh, it's a major it's a major undertaking. Um, so that so that's all that. But anyway, sorry, th this is how my brain works. Forgive me. Um, but as far as as far as making people happy, so uh, oh that that's what I was saying. So, you know, I've talked, I've talked to celebrities before about, you know, and they, and they get, and they get kind of, you know, um, freaked a little bit, uh, about, you know, how, how intense, uh, fan interactions can be sometimes. And, and I know the world, not all created equally. I know everyone has different personalities. I'm a very outgoing guy. 
Uh, I'm, de I'm clearly an extrovert, which is partly why I sub subject myself to the things that I subject myself to, because I enjoy it and I enjoy those interactions. Um, but the thing I say over and over and over again is, you know, I think more often than not, people just want to feel acknowledged. Uh, you, the fans, just want to feel acknowledged. And, and I want to do that for you. This is what this is to me. Every single time I ever did a, a panel and you guys only had like five minutes left over and sometimes no minutes left over at all. If anybody watching right now was in any of those panels, you, you saw the look on my face. You know how I feel about you. I'm, my, I only have a career because you guys have seen it fit to support me in what I do as an entertainer. And to that, I'm in, I am forever grateful from the bottom of my heart. Like in the zombie apocalypse, actors are the first to go. We don't serve a purpose other than, other than that. We don't hunt. We don't fish. We don't skin animals. We're not farming. We're not electricians. We're yuck yuckers. We're, we're, you know, we're making people laugh or cry or whatever. We will be the first to go. So the fact that we even have jobs right now I'm incredibly grateful for it. And beyond that, that I get to give you guys an opportunity, and I have an opportunity, to just talk to you and say thank you, and to acknowledge you and nod at you and say thank you for your support of Matt Smith and Doctor Who, thank you for your support of Nathan Fillion and Firefly and Castle and Alan Tudyk and, and Baldwin and, and all the panelists that we get to come by at Nerd HQ and that I get to spend a, a minute with you before and after that and just say thank you. And I, and, I, and, and, I, and I encourage all of my actor and celebrity friends to, you know, to do the same because I, I really, I believe that you should be acknowledged. Um, yeah. Yeah, and and by the way, and because uh, I've only got a, a couple minutes left, um, you know, I, it, what am I trying to say here? Um, I really, really, really want you guys to know how powerful you are, and I think that you know that on some level. But I, I, I want to, I want to just keep encouraging it in you. You are the power of the world. Your voices, collectively, are the most powerful thing in the world. When you buy Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola makes more Coca-Cola, and their shareholders keep their money in Coca-Cola. You know what I mean? So with every purchase that you make, you are saying something to the world. With every donation that you make, you say something to the world. And to the extent that I can keep bringing you guys stuff that I really believe that you want, that's what I'm trying to do. So that's why I'm asking you to believe in me, by the way, um, and to trust me if you can. Yes, <laughs> I am absolutely trying to run a business, and multiple businesses, by the way. I I'm trying to do the very best that I can do in my life for me and mine and my family, absolutely. But I'm not trying to do that at the expense of you. I'm trying to do that with you, in benefit to you. Because I, I really am trying to bring you something that, and bring you not just this, but multiple things down the road that I think will be powerful and they will be game changing and they will, they will, they will give all of us the power back uh, for us to decide what our fates are, particularly when it comes to entertainment and stuff like that. So, um, anyway, that was just a little, uh, I've come up to my 10 minutes here. I'm going to do a couple more. Uh, there's your smolder <laughs> and Elsa three. That was your, that was your quick smolder. Um, um, Let's see, what else? Um, <laughs> actors that are friends with Daryl Dixon survive. There you go. Solid. Um, uh, well, come on. I'm going to do a couple more here. I just want to answer a few more questions. I don't want to just leave on that note. Um, 
Oh, uh, Armistice 14, Rosie is making pancakes and watching Zachary on live stream. Enjoy those pancakes. Save me one. Um, <laughs> you can hear my phone continuously going off. Sorry about that. Um, um, don't cut out early. 8.30, 8.30. Should I go 13 more minutes? Should I go in? You know what? Forget it. I'm going to go 13 more minutes. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it! Because I can. I mean, why the heck not? Um, da, 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 da. Let's see. Oh, thanks for the virtual hug. Appreciate that. Virtual high five. That's to everybody. That was, that was kind of not... There you go. That's kind of more on the screen there. By the way, how insane is technology? I am sitting on a couch with my laptop live streaming my goofy mug to the world and talking to you. I can't hear you. I mean, I hear you in what you type, but you can see me and you can hear me right now. This is insane. It's insanity. Oh, no, no, no. I'm giving them 12 more minutes. This is what's happening. Oh. Oh, Krista Rodriguez apparently asked a question. But Krista, I don't see your question here. There's a lot of questions here, Krista. Okay? Um, da, da, da. Uh, let's see here. Sorry, guys. I'm just trying to find some some other things. <laughs> There's no crying in baseball. Yeah, I know that. By the way, that was just on the other the other night. And it's I still tear up at the end every time. Every time. League of Their Own. Great movie. Great movie. Uh, what do I usually do in my downtime? Uh, I like playing video games. I haven't had a tremendous amount of time to get to my video games. I've been doing a little traveling. Um, and... Um, <laughs> Oh, Crystal Rodriguez was asking me what my favorite part of working with her was. Her constant nagging. No. Uh, no. Chris is a... You are a... Well, I don't know who I should be talking to. Krista or the people. I'm going to talk to the people. Chris Rodriguez is a tremendous talent and an incredible girl. And anyone should be so lucky to work with her. There. I mean it. Um, all right, hold on. Let me go. I'm going to go back up to the top here. Sorry, guys, if you were below wherever I was right then. Yes, you can stream the Nerd HQ panels live. I, we stream them live. Somebody just asked me that. We stream them live to the whole world. So basically, all you have to do is follow the Nerd Machine uh, down, uh, around the time of Nerd HQ uh, and or whatever celebrity happens to, happens to be doing their, their particular panel, and there'll be a link. And you can hit it, and you go right to their panel, and we stream it, and it's, it's golden. It's great. Oh, somebody asked me, how did I quit smoking? Excellent question. I read a book. It's called The Easy Way to Stop Smoking. It is a, it's an amazing book. Uh, just go buy it. Go buy it immediately. Um, it just really challenges all of your thought process about smoking. And anyone out there that's, that's battling with it right now, let me tell you, as somebody who, who uh, battled it for a long time, it is giving you nothing good. Nothing good at all. It is just killing you. And don't tell yourself when you when you stop smoking, don't say you gave up smoking because you didn't give anything up. You you freed yourself from the bondage that it was putting on your life. And I know that's an easy thing to say as an ex-smoker or whatever. Guys, trust me, it is no good. Don't ever do it. Um, if I could play one video game for the rest of my life, what? I mean, I I don't know. It's probably be a first-person shooter with some just great multiplayer. Um, oh, and I'm being airplayed on your TV because of technology. I'm not just on your computer screen. I'm on your television. I'm on your television. I don't know why I needed to do that to the camera, but I felt like it was pertinent because I'm on your TV. And I'm talking directly to you, uh, J, at J period. Um... Let's see here. 
I'd love to come to Bonnie, Scotland, Robert McNaught, at some point in my life. I will let you know when I'm there. Uh, da, da, da. I'd love to appear more. Uh, this is a Britta underscore Jones. I'd love to appear more on VGHS. Uh, I love Freddie Wong and their gang. I just think that they're tremendous and doing awesome things. And hopefully we'll get to collaborate with them more in the years to come. Uh, if Marvel asked me to do another film, would I? Absolutely. Please. You missed my Ustream? How, how, did, how did you miss my... I'm still Ustreaming. How did you miss my Ustream? Oh! Oh! Wait, do you want these Legos back? Or... I don't, I don't understand that, unless that's a quote from the Lego movie, which I did see. And this is what I was going to say. If you guys haven't seen the Lego movie, go see the Lego movie. It is tremendous. I'm jealous that I wasn't in it. So good. Uh, favorite old school NES, SNES game? That is really tough to answer. Uh, but recently, uh, I've been playing a lot of Dr. Mario. Uh, and a little addicted, I must say. Liking it. And finding that all the classic NES games are impossible. I don't, I, I'm not convinced that I ever beat any of them. In my little, like, six-year-old brain, I beat all of them. But I don't know how I did that. I couldn't even figure out the first level of Strider. I couldn't do it. It's really annoying. <laughs> oh, these dumb dumbs. The people who are texting me. Who I love very much. You know who you are. Um, all right. I got seven more minutes. I'm trying to, trying to get to some different questions. Uh, uh, will you please tell my roommate Marisa to do her homework? Hey, Marisa. Do your homework. Seriously, you'll thank me later. What do I mean? What if I just make funny faces the whole time? Uh, oh, how would I rate the Game of Thrones season four premiere episode without spoiling on a scale of one to awesome? <laughs> awesome. Has there ever been a bad episode of Game of Thrones? No. They've not made one. It doesn't exist. Blasphemy to even think that it could be a possibility. Um, when am I going to guest star on Supernatural with, with my buddy Jarpad? I don't know. Whenever they invite me. Um... <laughs> Okay. I can't go on a date with you. I'm sorry. Even even though you said pretty please. Can't do it. Uh, I feel like there should be somebody else here. You know the next time I do this, I'm going to do I'm going to I'm going to have like a like a co-host, like a co-guest. Because then one of us can like be looking through a Twitter stream while the other person is talking about something because I feel this dead time is it's just too much. It's just too much. Uh, I would love to do a Walking Dead panel. Oh, you know what? I, yeah, I can speak to that for a second. Um, guy, I want to do every. I want to do every panel that I can possibly do. Uh, I, because again, the the panels that we do are just so different, you know, and um, and they're just so much fun. And the more panels that we can do, the more money that we can raise for Operation Smile. So. And the more opportunities we can give you guys to have these hour-long Q&As with people and just, like, ask them crazy weird shit. I don't know. Uh, or, or not even or, – or they just get to bust into things that they want to do. Like when Matt and Karen and Arthur all just busted into Bohemian Rhapsody just because. <laughs> like, that's amazing, you know. Um, or when Fillion has his impromptu auctions like a boss because that's what he wants to do. Um, all right. Who was better, Pascal or Maximus? Mm, I really feel like Maximus steals the movie, which does not make me happy. Um, so that, I guess. My fiancé proposed to me with a slideshow while we were watching Chuck. 
We want to go to Nerd HQ on our honeymoon. Yes! D-A-E Dreamer, Brittany and Haro, come to Nerd HQ on your honeymoon. There may, there's somebody on Facebook asked if I would get myself ordained and marry them. It could be a honeymoon slash marriage thing going on. It could be a lot of love going on in HQ this year. Who would win in a dance-off between me and Jared Padalecki? Police. I would dust Jared. Dust. <laughs> My son just rolled his eyes. He is waiting to play Roblox. Sorry. Three more minutes, and then you got all the Roblox you want. All right, I swear, this is going to be the end soon. This is going to be the end soon, guys. Um, you nominate Nerdist for co-host. Dude, I will totally try to talk Chris into doing a live Q&A with me at some point. That'd be fun. Um, a lost panel, I'd love to. It's hard. They're all in different parts of the world now. But I I was a big lost head. Losty. Loster. I don't know. What is the official fandom for lost? Um, hello to my Serbian friends. You know what? Hello to all of my friends and fans anywhere in the world. I'm just going to give a blanket hello to everybody. Because I don't want anybody to feel left out. Um, I am a Bond fan. I would love to play Bond. I, I think playing the first... Uh, American Bond, not playing Bond as an American, but being an American actor to play Bond would be pretty stupendous. I don't know that that will ever happen. I cannot do a Chewbacca-like sound. I've tried. I fail at it all the time. It'll just be embarrassing to try now. Uh, ooh, favorite Gene Wilder flick? That's impossible. Um, I don't know. I mean, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory to me is pretty stupendous honestly like you see gene wilder do so much comedy even in willy wonka and the chocolate factory but his performance is so layered and so deep and dark and inspired and i'm it's incredible um oh we got a minute left uh I have traveled internationally for Operation Smile. I went on a trip to Honduras. It was life-changing. I recommend anyone, uh, if, you're, if you feel led to do that, go and do it. It's incredible. Go volunteer with them or anywhere. I, I always follow that up. Please, just go get involved with any nonprofit. It'll change your life. Um, all right, what's my last question going to be? Oh, I got a minute left. If I were a dinosaur, what kind of dinosaur would I be? I don't know. I feel like... I feel like you'd want to be a badass, like a T-Rex or a Velociraptor or something like that, but then I kind of feel like they're, they're jerks. Like, they're just constantly angry and eating people or other dinosaurs. So, like a Triceratops, they're kind of badass, but they're herbivores, right? I don't know. But I like eating meat. Oh, I'm so torn. Um... um all right, I'm going to end it. I'm going to end it on this one, uh, which uh, applies to, well, I don't know, applies to anybody, I guess, but because I haven't really talked about anything spiritual thus far, or I have kind of a little bit, but um, the question is from Jean A. Wells 12, at Jean A. Wells 12. She says, how do you keep God first being an actor? And I've, I've, I feel like I've answered this before in other interviews, um, but... Um, uh, it's. It, I don't think it has anything to do with being an actor. Um, if you if you do believe in God, uh, in a God, um, and you believe that it's important to keep that God first in your life, I think that that's just what you need to do. And it doesn't matter if you're an actor or a plumber. Um, I happen to believe in a God uh, that um, I believe that that Creator knew what they were doing when they made me. And I believe that that creator put me in the situation in my life that I'm supposed to be in and gave me the tools to be in this situation. So I think that that's how you're prepared to do whatever you're supposed to do in life 
be it keeping God first or not. Um, so I don't think that my job in, is any different than anyone else. And I think that I have all the appropriate tools to do that. Um, and, uh, and I'm, and I'm happy to. And, uh, yeah, I hope that answered that question. Uh, and I guess that's it. We're, we're now, we're a minute beyond. Um, that's my time. That's my time. Uh, guys, please, by the way, if you have any more questions or any more concerns, um, tweet them to the Nerd Machine or myself. The Nerd Machine is a better place to go to simply because that's where we have a lot of resources and people available to do just that. And I'm trying not to inundate everyone on my Twitter feed with nothing but Nerd HQ stuff. I'm trying to keep it, you know, still me, I guess, on some level and doing weird and silly tweets um, if I can. Um, but, but please, we're, we're not afraid to answer anything, uh, that you guys have questions for. I, I, I'm, I really am about transparency and, uh, and, and put a giant premium on that. And I have, I'm never trying to pull any wool over anybody's eyes. I'm not trying to take advantage of anybody. Uh, I really genuinely am just trying to keep something going in Nerd HQ that I believe is good. And, um... And I believe that when you, when you come across something that's good, and when you feel like it's been put on your heart to keep it alive, that you try everything you can to do that. You know, even when people might not think it's the best way to do it, or that you, even if you haven't done it in the best way. And forgive me if this campaign has not been run in the best possible way. Uh, you know, I, it's my first crowdfunding campaign, and um, you know, we're just trying to do the best we can with it. But uh, I really, really, really do believe in it, and I really do believe in you, and and I believe in all the places that we can go together in the future, and uh, I hope that you, I hope that I can continue to build trust with you, and that you know that I'm on your side, and I'm, uh, and I really just, I, w I want to do cool stuff in this world while I got life in me. So there you have it. Love you guys. God bless you guys. And uh, we'll do another live stream soon. I don't know when, but, you know, check your local listings. And by your local listings, I mean Twitter and Facebook. All right. Till next time.